Mr. Bond, why have you abandoned your Aston Martin for a Mini? Do you mind if I take a look under the bonnet? There's nothing new about Bonds. The Bond market is enormous and takes many forms. It's simply a way of lending money to an organisation for an agreed amount of time in return for an agreed amount of interest. It includes government bonds, also called gilts, local authority bonds, which became infamous with the bankruptcy of Detroit earlier this year, high-grade corporate bonds, and so-called junk bonds. Today, I want to talk to you about a new type of bond that's materialised just in the last couple of years, mini bonds. According to Capita, this market is exploding at the moment. It was worth just £90 million last year, but it'll be something like a billion pounds this year, rising to £8 billion by 2017. So what are mini bonds, and should you have anything to do with them? As ever, the answer is, it depends. There are good mini bonds, mediocre ones, and those for which I can supply you with an investor's most important tool, a 10-foot barge pole. The main advantage is much better interest rates than you'll ever get in the bank. Anything from 6% to 10% is on offer, usually over periods from 5 to 10 years. And the returns can grow tax-free in your SIP if your provider has approved the scheme. But that may be challenging because the main drawbacks of mini bonds are that they're not regulated and therefore not covered by the Financial Services Compensation Act. But, as I've said before, that guarantee scheme is so underfunded that it can't be taken too seriously. If a bank or large company goes out of business, its £4 billion pot won't go very far among tens of thousands of investors. Much more important is to look at the quality of the companies offering the mini bonds. They include household names like John Lewis and Nuffield Health, fast-growing brands like Hotel Chocolat and King of Shaves, as well as smaller companies you may not have heard of. You are funding some new aspect of their business, so you need to understand how the bond proceeds will be deployed and what income stream is going to provide the cash flow to fund your interest payments. For example, I'm about to launch a, a mini bond, sometimes called a loan note, for a major overseas property developer. The company was recently valued at more than 150 million euros by PwC and it's already delivered thousands of properties. I know their senior management, and I like their conservative approach to finances. They're offering a 10-year mini-bond with 6% per annum interest. Your payments are secured not just against the shares of the company, but also against existing income from one of their operational resorts. Investment starts at £5,000, and you can learn more at whyminibonds.com. One other thing to be aware of with mini bonds. Unlike the bonds in big companies, they can't be bought and sold on the open market. So once you make a decision to invest, you're locked in for the term of the bond. But that's not so different to many other savings bonds offered by the banks. To get the higher returns, you always have to lock your money away for longer periods. I recently asked one of my business bankers, HSBC, what they would offer me if I locked £50,000 of retained profits away in one of their long-term bonds rather than in the ordinary savings account. At present, my hard-earned cash receives 0.03% interest. If I lock it away for five years, that goes up to a breathtaking 0.3%. So you can take a guaranteed loss of at least 4% a year with interest rates so far below inflation, or you can take a chance on a mini bond to get a positive return, but with some risks. I wish I could wave a magic wand and get you fantastic returns at zero risk. But as you can see, I'm not wearing bright red underpants. From what I've told you, what do you think about the idea of mini bonds? Would you invest in them? Just pop your thoughts in the comment box below the video. And as ever, be careful out there.